sold. I'm going to change the geometry here to make it easier for me. So this is the problem, right? But I'm going to define this to be the x-axis. So th this is the p-angle. This is the y-axis. So in some sense here, Z is equal. So then, let me write then what the potentials are. So phi then, phi of A is the radius at theta, and phi is equal to, is going to be equal to B0 so minus P over 2, less than 3, less than pi. And minus P0 for pi over 2, let's say equal to P, less or equal to less or equal to pi. Now you can do it the other way if you want. But I don't want to, I have it in my notes this way and I don't want to change the one to one. So this is what we have. And so the potential then will have to be regular at the origin, right? So we have to break up the potential into two regimes. I have to have V in of R and P. Now, that can be equal to a constant. This constant is irrelevant to me, okay? Because it will have to be determined by the boundary conditions that I have. So this has to be zero if I'm setting the potential to be zero because otherwise I'm adding a potential shift to the potential. Do you understand that, right? There is no way that when this is V zero, I can add a constant to this. So then that, that would have to be uh, equal to zero. So I have then a potential inside. And so I'm going to write this as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of, now I'm going to write it in two terms, k to the n r to the n plus v to the n r to the have the log of r because when r is equal to zero, this goes up, right? I can put an a0 in there, like I said before, but I'm not going to be able to have a v0 here by shifting the potential, right? So what about outside? So you can see that outside, I'm going to have the other term. Why is the boundary conditions? Uh, the boundary conditions is, is that it has to be zero. So I can do a V out if you want. So I can write V out for R and P. And so this will have, they can have a log of R if you want. Okay? And so then this can be A equals 1 to infinity or 1 over R to the N times C N cosine of N P plus Then I can add if I want to because the oh, 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 this is not so up. So, so then the R is greater. <coughs> so if I now match the boundary conditions as you can see before, term by term, and I use the orthogonality of the sine and cosines, the way I have written this, S sub n has to be equal to C sub n and V sub n will have to be equal to P sub n. Right? with the a to the 2a plus 1, right? So if I match the boundary conditions now, and with the two terms, what do I get? That 1 over a to the n, c n, will have to be equal to a to the n, a sub n. And 1 over a to the n, b n, will have to be equal to a to the n, b n. This is uh, I get this. 
So what I want you guys to think about is then how do we apply the boundary conditions that we have, which is V0 and, and uh, minus V0 to G, and I can use either one of those two things, right? It doesn't matter because I have V0 would have to be, uh, V and A would have to be equal for V0 to G. So, so let's apply to this thing. So then at the boundary, I will have to then multiply both sides by sine and cosines, and I have to then ask the question. So V0 as a function of B now will have to be equal to the sum n equals 1 to infinity into the n into the a n here cosine of B of B plus Let's write the terms in general. So what should be the V N term? So you multiply both sides by the sine of NV, right? I'm going to have to use the orthogonality position of 0 to 2 pi for sine, say, of NV, sine of NV dV is equal to pi delta of N and I'm going to use the same for the other ones, and I'm going to say for the cosine is zero, okay? So if I do this, then I'm going to have that on this right-hand side, I have, when I have the sum, I'm going to have a to n to the n, a to the n power, n to m times this pi, right? It has to be equal to the integral from zero to two pi of v of a and b sine of mv. Similarly, I'm going to have that a to m a m pi is equal, because that's on the right hand side, is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of v0 of a and b times the cosine of mv. And it's easy to find out what the v ms and a are, because I have to do the integral of the sine for the v0 and the integral of the cosine. Okay? So let me do the integral over the sine. And I'm going to let you guys see I have some time, some time to do the integral of the cosine. So what is this integral? Well, this integral is the integral from, I said over here, minus pi over 2 is a v0 here. The integral is a minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of sine of mv dv, right? This is this term, and then I have the minus v0, which is minus the integral now for pi over 2 to d pi over 2 of sine of mv dv. Right? That's what we have. So what is the first term? to minus v0 for m times the cosine of mv dv minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 plus v0 for m times the integral from uh, pi over 2 cosine The integrals are straightforward to do, and so what do we get? What are these equal to? <laughs> I see some wrinkled faces. <laughs> what is the minus a minus? What is the cosine of minus theta? But it depends on what m is. Huh? It, has to, it depends on what m is. Like it no, no, the cosine of minus theta. The cosine theta. Oh. Cosine theta. Yeah. Right? So 
then this term is going to be cosine of theta minus cosine of minus theta, which is cosine theta. So this should be zero because this is minus pi over two. So this is minus cosine of minus pi over two times n. N could be two, four, six, right? But because of the minus sign, that is plus cosine of the same thing. So you're substituting these two things, so that should be zero, right? What about here? Yes, so this should be equal to zero for m even, <coughs> equal to zero for m odd. So the sine integral gives me zero no matter what I do. Right? Uh, now, what about the, oh, the v term? So to the sine of m phi, I evaluate between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So this should be v0 over m, right? And I'm going to have sine of m phi between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then I'm going to have here minus sine of m phi between pi over 2 and phi pi over 2. Now my advice, if it doesn't grab you right away, is that you basically do, do write it in the explicit form. 3 pi m phi over 2, and then I start looking at what happens, right? No phi, 3 pi m uh, over 2, and see what happens when m is one, when m is equal to two, and so on. Okay? So I have to do this. And so what is this? This is then equal to uh, four p zero Four over two is two, it's just one. 
Now, this is not the only way to write it, but remember, m is odd. So later on, I can substitute for m odd a term that goes as 2n plus 1, right? Where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And then I put then this as minus 1 to the n, right? But the coefficients, remember, are odd terms. This is what I have to tell you. So I have a to m here. So let's write what a to m is. A to m is going to be equal to, I have a pi over a to m, right? Times is zero for m even. And then is, if I just put this, four d zero to the m. So I have here. But zero for m even is minus one to the m minus one over two for m odd. That is what my question is. Okay, we're well, running out of time. Oh, sorry. So let's uh, let's then write what this is. So let me write uh, the potential d in of r and d then should be equal then to four d zero over pi sum over n odd, right? So minus 1, I'm just going to write it like this for right now, n minus 1 over 2 divided by n times now r over a. Remember the a that I have here? And I have r of n to the n cosine of n b. Because that's the only term that survives that I have here. And I'm summing over n r. Okay? So this is b in. So uh, that, that's how it goes inside. So now you might say, well, I don't want to do the sum from n odd. I want to do the sum from n equals to 0, 1, 2, 3. What should I do? Uh, instead of n minus 1. So this is n odd is 1, 3, 5, 7, right? That's all. So then if I substitute this and I put here what? n n plus 1, right? Will be n equals 0, 1, 2. Then I have to put here 2 n plus 1. Then what do I do here? I have to put here 2n plus 1. I have to put here 2n plus 1. Right? And if I put 2n plus 1 here, I get that this is n. Right? And now I can write this as n equals uh, 0. So now only that I have minus 1 to the n, I have 2n plus 1 at the bottom, 2n plus 1 in the exponent that I have here. And then I have the cosine of 2n plus 1 phi here. And this is the important thing. Okay? Because if you look at the cosine of phi, n phi, then n was odd. Now, given this, I can ask you what is the value of the potential of the center of this thing and all of those stuff. So now that I have V in and you know how we did this, what is V out? we did with the Legendre polynomials. This is not similar to that. We're not on any axis here. We wrote an expression. Right? And so the v sub n were zero, so the d sub n will be zero. The s sub n's, I know what it is, so c sub n's should be equal to a to the 2n, a to the n. This is the c sub n's. I go here with the 
cosine of it, right? So I have a to the n, a to the n of r. So then c sub n has to be a to the n. So right for me, knowing this, uh, knowing this, b of course is zero because it's b where it is zero. We said that the b is of course zero, right? So right for me, the solution outside using this. So the n is zero. the m in this whole thing was substituted for r over a to the n? Oh, yeah, because what I did is multiply by sine of n phi, mm -hmm. and then integrate. And so when the sum over n was there, the only term that survived was the n equals to n phi. Right. So then I have to have an a sub m, right, that's pi here, right? And then a b sub n times pi there. So this is what I have to pi there. Right. And then I have to do the integral on the right hand side, on the left hand side, excuse me. That was zero. And that a m is r over a, right? The, or a to the m? Right here? Yeah, that's r it's over a. It's a to the m. And so then when you look at a m now, it's equal to whatever I have here, right? One over pi. A Oh, I see what you're saying. So this is what's a pi? Yeah, this pi goes to the pi. That's what you're saying? <laughs> this is the whole thing, Josh. There was a pi in there. Yeah, well, I was asking, as I said earlier before you wrote it, right? Oh, okay. I'm wondering, just the a to the um, what did it do? Well, a, a to the m, this goes to the m power, so m would right. off, right? So right. 1, d, 5, 7. What's it expressed as a to the m in the expression for the potential inside? For the potential inside, now I have to put this inside. I don't have to, I can take it outside, but I divide it as r to the m over a to the m, because I have to put r to the m. Uh -huh. So now I have a to the m at the bottom, right? So yeah, I have to make n equals to n, so I have to have so this here. Remember, we have an n here, so we have n equals to n. So then I will change it to n. Yeah, so that's just, that's just yes. Yes. OK, so now we're running out of time, guys. So what about v out? What do you have to do about v out? Don't you just add a term, the 1 over a to the 2n? You just replace c and with And cancel the n. The n's there. I have to have this here. So that's going to be yes. c n. Is equals to you said a squared a two n a n just multiply by a two n. Oh, and it's not so obvious. It's, uh, uh, don't do it in your head. I don't want you to do it in your head. You have to write it because of the n odd thing. N it was odd. Remember that? We wrote it as n odd here. N was odd, and I had a n minus one over two. Oh, the fuck off. okay. So now when you write it, we wrote it everything the way it was here, but then we say, well, m odd, I'm going to write as 2m plus 1, where n is 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So if I put a for m here 2n plus 1, what do I get? 2n plus 1 minus 1 is 2m. 2n over 2 is n, so this is n. But n here is now 0, 1, 2, 3, right? But now at the bottom we had m, which was odd, 1, 3, 5, 7, so I have to put 2m plus 1, and of course, this goes to the end, so this is 2n plus 1, and here goes 2n plus 1, right? So then these terms have to stay the same. The question is, what does the potential look like for the outside? have to be the same at r equals to n. r equals to a. 
right? You have to work. It is not very difficult, Josh, and from now on, it's not going to be very complicated once you understand the symmetry between these two things because of the continuity of the special of the integral. Okay, so no, I don't want to. I don't want to be able to, to do the next one. Oh, we run out of time. Okay. <laughs> but I'll have to. You see, this was a problem in the in the textbook. You just took me back to Why did you pick a problem in between our homework problem? That's what I wanted. Oh, so I'm giving you this problem. You see, this problem, this problem is, is, uh, it's, it's not so complicated, it's easy. but it's book, more bookkeeping. After reading. It's so more bookkeeping. But the other problem we're going to do, and I'm going to put this slide in there, is imagine I have an infinite cylinder. So, okay? And so this is now x, and this is y, and this is out of the no. And now this is a grounded okay. infinite cylinder. So the z axis is into the word. Is this a problem in homework? No. Okay. It's <laughs> one similar to one in the homework. And now I apply an electric field, which is E is equal to E0 x tan. So it's in the x direction. And now I want to find the potential everywhere. Okay? And it's grounded. So when it's grounded, remember what I said before, even if it's a shell, the potential inside is constant, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a shell or not. We don't have to specify that. So it's grounded, so the potential of the surface of the thing will be zero. The potential at infinity will have to give me E zero x hat, right? And so I have to find, again, a polarization of this cylinder. There will be a polarizing thing. So this is what I, 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 I was going to do, but now we will not show you to do it, but I still want to hold you accountable on it. Which is, now that you solve for this problem, which you have done the spherical one, and you will find what the uh, induced surface charge density on the sphere was, right? Remember, to find that potential on the electric field in the z direction, then you have those two terms, right? And you find the probability that was one of the problems that was assigned in the whole work. Which I need to collect those because yes. I need to. Uh, so, so, uh, so now here you're going to end up with a similar expression. So the question is, uh, what is the difference between these two things? What is the difference in geometry in terms of the polarizability of a sphere versus the polarizability of an infinite cylinder? Now, and for you to answer that question, you have to look at the expressions that you get. But you have to remember that this electric field, like in the previous case, is uniform, right? I ground this, and now I have to write my solution, and my solution has to go to this. So now you have to see whether or not this is, the only reason this is a little bit more complicated is because I have these two terms multiplying these two terms. You see where it is? So now you have to say, well, if this goes as our cosine of NP, it will look to me that this will have to be cosine P because X, of course, is equal to r cosine p, y is equal to r sine p, right? So then you have to find what x hat is, right? It's the, the graph. So if this is in the x direction, the potential basically has to depend on x. So in the limit, right, of uh, r going to infinity, right, minus db dx has to go to e of x. Okay, let me give you the homework back. And um, in the little time that before we get kicked out of here. Ed, stay away. Huh? So I like your homework. But this homework is a little longer. Cerrado. Acá. 